I studied in, um, in Bucharest, I did uh, the Faculty of Electronics. And then it was like a challenge to, uh, let's say, to go abroad, you know, like I think it's a, it's a dream of, of many people. And um, I applied at several universities, um, in, mostly in Belgium and in Holland. And uh, well, to my surprise, I, I ended up having like uh, several uh, offers to do a PhD. And in some sense, I chose University of Leiden in, um, in the Netherlands. There in the group of Tom, there were many people working on facial expression recognition. And I was, from the very beginning, I was uh, attracted by this field and I started to work together with, with my colleagues there. And joining uh, human.ai was exactly in this direction. So trying to, to kind of uh, be able to put together some of the methods that we are developing as, as researchers, let's say like, like uh, toys, if you want, to put them into real life and to try to see if we can address real customers. Humans has a big ambition of trying to put together, let's say, contribution for every single human. The starting point is that we are all having, without even realizing, we are all having some, let's say, our own DNA, our own contribution that we can put together. So the idea of human is to, uh, to allow all these contributions to, to come together and only together we can have a critical mass to produce an impact on the society. So what we do at the moment, we start with uh, providing information from um, a particular human and we are capturing his own digital DNA. So what does it mean? It means that we can capture the voice, the gesture, the way of being and so on. And we are animating a particular avatar that could speak, for example, in, in different languages, could also speak in different contexts. So we are animating this avatar. So you are the owner of this, um, let's say, particular information. Well, one of the main um, contribution of humans is the fact that it's putting together two different fields that are two emerging fields right now, right? So AI has been with us for, for many years, but now it's finally coming to, let's say, a very successful solution. NFT is something very new and many people will not know what it is. So what, what is the AI NFT is to try to put together all these two concepts. This would mean that everyone will have, will own his own, let's say, piece of AI and this could also be reflected into the, the NFT market. So that would be, I think it's a, it's a winning um, idea of humans so to put together these two, uh, these two fields. If I'm owning a piece of AI, then practically without even realizing what is the value of it, I could put into a, a larger system and then I could have a benefit of it according to how it is used by you know, other or in an application domain and so on. So that would be, it would create the AI NFT value. So our idea is to provide practically to every citizen the possibility to contribute. Okay, so you don't need to be you know, an, an AI developer or, uh, you know, technologist and so on. You just, in a, in a seamless way, you can just put your own, let's say, contribution in some way. Could be data labeling, could also be, uh, you know, information, know-how and so on. And you put them together in a seamless way in the, um, in the platform. And this would be used together with other technology to create some high level and more complex systems. In some sense, this would be more like it will be a high level interface in which you are providing some of the information, but that will be taken and encapsulated within a more complex part of the information. So we are not requiring the users to, to have any particular knowledge in AI, but we just require them to kind of help us use their information in a useful way. At the moment, what we are uh, concentrating on is um, animating uh, heads, faces. In a longer term, we are going to uh, extend it also to bodies, so to, to, have, to have real avatars in some sense. At the moment, we have talking heads, and in this way, we are combining, let's say, voice. So you could have your own voice, could also be knowledge, this coming from text, could be text in different languages and so on, and we are animating this avatar that could be of, of a choice of, uh, of each user to, for example, say something in different language, utter information in, uh, let's say, something given um, in text. So, so we are kind of creating 
And if you want a clone of a particular user that could speak in different languages and with different, different type of knowledge and, uh, and information. This is quite challenging. It's coming nowadays, so there are several um, applications, for example, especially on the domain of, let's say, video capturing. So you have a video in which you could generate, from the video, you could generate the text that is describing what's going on in the video. What we want to do is to also to provide the other way around. So you could also go from text or audio to, to video animation and and you can also put all these modalities together so that you are, as I said, you are providing a sort of, a, let's say, a human copy, a human avatar that the user could own and could also use it in, uh, in his own way. Uh, one of the products that we are um, Quite in a, in a mature um, stage at the moment, it's called Tuvid. So practically what we want to do, it's um, going towards type of audiobooks, okay? So imagine that you want to get some instruction of how to do things. Practically what you have, you have some text, and then based on this text, you could transfer it into a, a talking head that will read in different language, in different, with different voices, would read these instructions. And at the moment in Tuvid, we do uh, have contacts with several companies which are interested both in advertisement. There are some um, contacts also for, let's say, coaching in the sport domain. So there are a few, uh, a few very interesting applications. And as far as I know, this type of technology has been very well received by, uh, by in general, by the market. Because while there are some kind of very specific solutions, I believe our solution has the power to be generic and to be very easily customizable to, to what the user wants to do. What I believe is that uh, we should uh, move from, uh, let's say, only talking heads in which it's very restricted to what it is, to more creative content. And this could be, uh, well, there are several ways. As I said, we can try to, to go towards, let's say, body animation. So we could have some avatars in which, because usually when we are communicating, we are not just, you know, what the head that, that talks, but we are also have gestures, we also have several movements, nodding, and all these type of things. So that will be, I would see, at the first development of, uh, as the first extension of our, of our technology. Then we will see exactly how this could, um, let's say, be extended. So one idea is to also work into other modalities. So one, one, um, one solution will be to have a, a sort of voice-to-voice -voice translation. So practically, I'm talking to you in English, but you could have at the same time on the other hand, let's say when you have some kind of, uh, you know, a Zoom meeting and so on, you have myself talking into Spanish or Italian or another kind of language in a seamless way. I think this is, this is also something that, that we could, and we do have the technology at the moment. So we are also looking for, for partners to, uh, to start working into this direction. This is something that we still have to decide, but uh, for sure we will going to have some genetic avatars that are going to, to live into the, in the human ecosystem. We would also consider that the user can own his own avatar and can kind of plug it in into, uh, into the, uh, let's say, the, the, our platform. Meaning that we are not going to have this information, this could be kind of, let's say, private information of the user, but the user can still use this avatar within our, uh, our platform. Of course, we are using deep learning, and this is essential. This is very broad. For our creative uh, technologies, we are using, of course, things like generative adversarial networks, autoencoders, and these are uh, very powerful methods to, say, create natural interfaces and natural way of doing animation and cross-model uh, translation of information. Then, on the machine learning part, uh, I think it's one of the main bottlenecks that uh, had, has been for, for many years was the fact of, let's say, missing label data. And in our case here, of course, we don't expect people to start labeling a lot of information. And in general, deep learning approaches would require a lot of label data. What we try to do is to use approaches like, you know, trying to use unsupervised, information as much as possible, so this means to benefit from unlabeled data, so even if it's, you have the data but it's unlabeled. 
There is also an approach called self-supervised learning in which practically the data is labeled by itself. So we are using some pseudo labels to do training and then learn this, uh, this, these models. At the moment, these are the main trends. Another thing that it's, uh, it's very common and we will start using it, there are things, let's say, moving towards uh, explainable AI. So let's say AI in general is not only a black box, and also quite very important, and is a big, um, let's say, um, at the moment, a big trend, is to go towards trustworthy AI. I think this is, this is quite important because people will need to, to trust the technology, right? So we are not abusing the information from people, also, you know, privacy and so on, but we try to, to get the information so to benefit as much as we can without, of course, leaking out, you know, uh, private information uh, and other type of things. So I think this is, these are the main trends that, uh, that we will apply. And this is, of course, it's very broad, but we are trying to apply these principles also in, um, in, uh, in the human.ai technology.